You guys, there is a massive problem with creative education, which is that while all of us want to become more talented, more intuitive, more creative in our artistic work, the very process of doing so seems to be completely shrouded in mysteries. The thing is, art is very hard to talk about and creativity is very difficult to teach because pretty much anything that falls within the realm of the creative, the intuitive, the artistic, is naturally going to defy all of our attempts to define and conquer. Which really begs the question, can creativity even be taught? And I think that the answer is yes, but it's complicated. And that's what I'd like to cover in today's episode. I want to answer the questions, why is art so complicated? Why don't art teachers ever seem to give a straight answer to seemingly simple questions? And what can you, as a student of the arts, as a beginner, do about it? Welcome to the Intuition Analyze podcast, which is a show all about connecting with your intuitive voice and becoming a happier, healthier, more creative person along the way. In this episode, I really want to make sure that you guys do not make the same mistake that I made when I was first starting out in my creative education, which is that I totally misunderstood the very nature of the creative journey itself. On this podcast and on my YouTube channel, I love talking about all the different strategies that we can employ to improve our creative thinking and become the best artists that we can be as quickly and effectively as possible. But today I really would like to take a step back from all of that to talk about why these conversations are so difficult to have in the first place. Because it seemed to me that when I was first starting out, I had all of these fundamental questions that nobody wanted to answer. Questions that you've all probably thought about. Questions like, what is creativity really about? How does a person become more creative? And what is the fastest possible way to improve yourself as an artist? These are very important questions, but it seemed to me that the more I asked them, the more I was met with very vague and unhelpful answers. And the more I learned, it seemed the less I understood. And I was really stuck with this for a very long time until eventually I was forced to ask bigger questions, bigger why questions. Why is art so complicated? Why don't my art teachers give me clear answers to what I perceive to be simple questions? And why is this so difficult to talk about? And it wasn't until I answered those questions that I really started to make some breakthroughs in my creative development. And I think the same will be true for you. So today we're gonna to talk about the creative educator's dilemma the very problem of creative education itself. And the best way for us to do that is to do a bit of a thought experiment, a bit of an imagination game, if you will. And so follow me on this. I want you to imagine for a moment that you are a contestant on a scavenger hunt slash survival game show. And the rules of the game show are this. They're going to place you in the middle of the woods where you're completely lost, you don't know the terrain, you're surrounded by trees, and your only real goal is to find a tiny landmark, like a small red flag that's been planted somewhere in the earth, somewhere in this forest, and you're more or less completely alone. But the one thing that they do provide you with is a radio. This is your lifeline. You can use this to talk to an expert of survival and navigation, somebody who's actually been on the show before you and won the grand prize. So they know what they're doing, they can help you through this challenge. Now my question to you is, in this situation, what would you do? Because if you're like me, you would immediately pick up the radio and ask the expert for directions, because that just seems like the smart thing to do. But what you would find out very quickly is that they actually can't give you directions. Not because it's not allowed, not because they don't want to, but because they physically can't do it. And here's why, here's how that conversation would go. You would pick up the radio and you would say, hey, I'm in the middle of the woods, I'm trying to find the landmark, which way do I go? And they would say, well, tell me this, where are you right now? And you would say, I have no idea. And they would say, well, where are you trying to go? And you would say, I don't know. And then they would say, well, if you don't know where you are and you don't know where you're going, I can't give you directions. Now, this might frustrate you. You might be really upset by this because you're thinking, wait a minute, aren't you someone who's already done this before me? Haven't you been on this show before and won? Can't you just tell me where the landmark is so I can find it? And they would say, well, yes and no. Yes, I've been on this show before, but when I was on the show, it was a different season. We were in a different terrain and I was looking for a different landmark. So I really can't give you directions. This is the creative educator's dilemma, which is that every artist in existence is starting from a different place, going to a different place, and taking a different path to get there. So it's a hard pill to swallow, but nobody can map out your journey except 
for you. Now that's the bad news and there is some good news that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Before I get there, let's talk about why this is the case because this is not the case with most things that we learned in school. If you think back to all of your math and science and English classes, everything was pretty straightforward. You were given a clear syllabus, all the things you were gonna do throughout the semester, all the steps you were going to take, and then you took those steps and you were better for it. But it doesn't work that way with art. Why is this? Well, the answer to that question is that art is built on divergent thinking, whereas pretty much everything else we studied in school is built on the principles of convergent thinking. Anytime we're in a math class, so to speak, as an example, we all seek to converge on the same ideas, the same principles, the same problems. Because in math, the goal is for every single student, no matter where they're starting, to solve the same problems the same way, to get the same answers, and reach the same place by the end of the semester. And since that's the case, since the destination is known and the principles are absolute, every person can just follow the same track to reach that goal. The goal is the same for every person. But in the case of art, we're dealing with divergent thinking, which is just this idea that we're all starting from different places, going to different places, and as such, taking our own unique paths to get there. We all have our own creative goals, our own niches that we're trying to get into with our art, and our own definitions of creative success, as well we should. But since that's the case, it becomes completely impossible for one artist to give another artist clear and definitive directions for their work. Because no matter how experienced you are in your journey, your journey is not someone else's journey. Your success is not the same as someone else's success. And so it falls to us as the individual to make our own path. And this is the best thing about art and the worst thing about art. The best thing about art is that we all get to make our own meaning, but the worst part of it is that we all have to. Because the moment we take someone else's idea of creativity and make it our own, the moment we follow someone else's footsteps instead of forging our own path, what we do ceases to be art. And so your creative journey is ultimately up to you. But there is a silver lining to all of this. As promised, there is some good news, which is that while we can't give each other clear and definitive directions for each other's work, we can talk about common strategies of survival and navigation within the creative space that apply to all artists in all fields. Going back to the game show analogy, if you can't get directions from the expert on the radio, what you're probably going to do next is start talking about strategies. You'll start asking them questions about how to survive, how to hunt, how to start a fire, maybe questions about uh, how to navigate using the sun and the stars. And all of those things can be taught and learned because they're fundamental principles of survival and navigation. They're not telling you where to go, but they can certainly give you some advice as to how to figure out where to go. And the exact same thing is true with art. Nobody can define your path for you, but the principles of how to create your own path can be taught and learned. The good news is there are tons of great strategies out there for creative thinking and learning and growth that apply to all artists in all fields. So no matter what your interest is, whether it's stand-up comedy or drawing and painting or writing novels, there are a lot of great insights and resources out there for you. If only we know how to ask the right questions. And in future episodes of this podcast, I'm gonna be covering a lot more of these specific strategies in detail. But for now, let me just leave you with this one piece of advice and one piece of encouragement, which is that if you want to succeed creatively and take good advice from the experts, the first thing we need to do is shift our mindsets. Instead of asking your art teachers, what direction should I go? Ask them, how do you go about finding direction as an artist? Instead of asking professional artists, what kind of art should I make? Ask them, how did you find a niche that fit your career? Instead of seeking to get directions from other people, seek to understand the process that they went through to find directions for themselves so that you can replicate that yourself take your own journey and define your own path along the way. Because hey, that's the business that we're in as artists and as creative people. And just know that if you're confused, if you're struggling with this, if you feel like you have more questions than answers, that's actually a good thing. Because the very process of answering these questions for yourself is the creative journey. The obstacle is the path. 
Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to be digging into some really serious creative strategies in future episodes of the podcast. So do make sure that you're subscribed for that. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's episode, do feel free to reach out to me either in the comment section of the YouTube video or by email, which will be linked in the show notes for you guys. One of my favorite things about all of this is getting to connect with you and have conversations about all of the creative challenges that you're facing so that we can get through these things together. So I really look forward to connecting with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you in the next episode. Take care. Thank you.